the face, the horn, the pritchel and hardy holes, names of the different areas of a blacksmith's anvil on which he was able to flatten, twist, curve, and pierce hot metal. The blacksmith at work in the 18th and early 19th centuries was a multi-talented artisan who was able to make or repair numerous indispensable items, be they simple like nails or hinges, or more complex items like parts for weapons and tools, or parts for wagons and plows. In the past, this occupation was essential and highly esteemed in every community. His workshop was known as the Smithy and was the old-time version of our present-day hardware store. It was often a popular gathering place for visitors and neighbors to converse and exchange news and ideas. The typical Smithy had a high peak roof and double doors on two or three of its walls to allow for proper ventilation and space for wagons and horses. To prevent fires, the floor was compacted dirt. Crushed rock surrounded the blazing red-hot forge. An ideal structure would have several windows for optimal lighting. Clayton's first blacksmith was a Welsh immigrant named Shadrach Jones. He worked in Sacramento before he came to town. And in 1864, he set up shop where today the Clayton Museum Garden is located on Block 1, Lot 5 of Joel Clayton's 1857 town map. In the present day, this site remains Lot 1, Block 5 in the county assessor's parcel map and on the following location map and has become an educational oasis including native trees and plants and agricultural and local history information. The museum garden was originally designed in 2000 by Greta Ringerberg and again in 2010 by Anna Wendorf and most recently by Steve Lane in 2012 to the present. Hardscape, drip irrigation and garden structures were completed in 2018 by Donisi Land Camp Construction. This beautiful rendering of the proposed museum garden installation was donated by local artist illustrator Charles Endum for project community fundraising purposes. In the present day museum garden, you will notice items made and used by blacksmiths embedded in the concrete. The wagon wheel pattern of the bricks is a nod to our horse drawn past. Shadrach Jones left town in 1877 to work in Berkeley, and records show John and George Condy, father and son blacksmiths, plying their trade in the same location until the 1890s. At this time, the coal mines over the hill in Nortonville and Summersville were in full swing, and business was good for Clayton's merchants, saloon keepers, and hoteliers. Enough business to support more than one blacksmith. Around the same time the Condies were in business, Matthew Doc Nottingham built his smithy on the corner of Main and Oak Streets, currently the location of our bocce ball courts. <clears throat> Blacksmiths not only made horseshoes, but also acted as farriers, putting the shoes on the horses. Conveniently next door, and east of Nottingham's blacksmith shop, stood James Curry's livery and stable on Main Street. Doc Nottingham was a very busy man running a thriving business but made time to play the bass drum in the Clayton Cornet Band. In 1891, Nottingham sold the business to Charles Harry Trait and family. Harry Trait was a German immigrant who learned the trade as a young man while working as a ranch on Willow Pass Road in the northern part of the greater Clayton Valley, today's Concord. Similar to James Curry, Trett, and his wife, Emma Jane Robertson Trait, lived around the corner from his business in a small home on the southwest corner of Center Street and Diablo Street. Harry trained his oldest son, Rudolf Dutch Trait, to be a blacksmith, even though the boy had his heart set on becoming a plumber. In an 18, 1968 interview, Dutch said that when his father lost an eye, there was no other option but for him to run the business, and it was deeded to him in 1914. Dutch's customers were farmers, cowboys, and stockmen whose working horses and driving horses he would shoe. Occasionally, he would be called upon to craft or repair items, but factory-made tools and the advent of the automobile signaled the end of his noble occupation. Traditional blacksmith work was losing ground, and Dutch had to work additional jobs to support his family. 
1920, he was a blacksmith in a shipyard. In the census of 1930, he was listed as a farmer in a vineyard. And in 1942, he was working at the Cowell Portland Cement Company, situated just a couple of miles from Clayton. Eventually, Dutch's blacksmith shop building was moved to Center Street, east of the Endeavor Hall, and was used as his garage. In spite of the hard physical labor, Dutch Trait was proud to have been a blacksmith and laughed when he remembered a lady coming to his shop wanting to have her sewing needles straightened. She must have been an old-timer whose experience had taught her to have faith in a blacksmith's ability to solve any problem, large or small. Sadly, today there is virtually no trace of the buildings related to the history of blacksmithing in Clayton. What does remain is a tribute to the Trait blacksmith shop in a play structure panel on the Grove Park on the south Center Street side. And also remaining are Trait's blacksmith tools on display at the Clayton Museum's blacksmith exhibit, located in the former Clayton Jail building behind the museum building. We hope you enjoyed part one, the brief history segment of our Blacksmithing in Clayton video series. Be sure to watch part two of the Clayton Museum Blacksmith Exhibit, where we get into more detail of the tools and methods used by blacksmiths, presented by Clayton Museum docent and blacksmith Brian Connery. And if you'd like to see Brian create a blacksmith work in the Museum Garden Plaza, side of the first blacksmith shop in Clayton, please see our Blacksmith in Clayton video, part three, A Blacksmith in the Garden. Also, to learn more about Clayton history, please visit our museum at 6101 Main Street, Clayton, and our website, claytonhistory.org, where you can also purchase the Clayton Images of America book filled with photos and captions of Clayton's rich history.